If you are not hosting your coding projects online, you will not be getting hired, especially in 2024. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to deploy your entire full stack coding project, including your front end, your back end, and your database completely for free online. I have personally tried a bunch of different methods and websites to try to host my coding projects. And let me tell you, it could be an absolute pain. But I've come up with this list that I'm about to share with you of all the best resources that are even used by some big tech companies in production. And don't worry, if you're an absolute beginner, I'll also be giving you a full walkthrough on how I will actually be hosting this coding project online. So first is the front end. The front end of a website or application is the part that users actually interact with. Think when you first load a website and you see a colored button beautifully centered on the page, that's all front end development. Typically, this is built in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or in a library like React.js. Now, when you build these front-end applications, you typically run it on your local machine for development and testing purposes, and this could be on something like localhost. The problem with this is that this URL is only accessible from your computer, and if you share with somebody, nobody will be able to see your work. Therefore, you need to actually deploy this website, and here's the best way for you to be able to do that. Start by opening a browser on your computer, and then head to github.com. If you don't already have an account, you could go ahead and sign up here. Otherwise, just log in. Once inside, click on your icon here at the top right and then on your repositories. A repository is like a folder and this is where we're going to upload all of our front end code like your HTML and CSS files. So let's start by clicking new at the top right here and it'll bring you to this landing page to create a new repository. Let's fill in all the details for this repository, like the name, which I'll call Premier Zone Website. And you could add a description if you want. I'm not going to do that. You also could select between public or private and add a readme file, all that. Once you're done, go ahead and click Create Repository, and it will bring you to this page in a few seconds. Now you want to upload all of your code into this repository by selecting upload an existing file. So as you can see, it's now uploading all of my files for my front end code. Once the upload is done, come all the way down to the bottom and select commit changes. And then after a few minutes, you should have something like this set up with all of your code. For the hosting itself, you have three options. The first is GitHub Pages. I really like this because it's directly in GitHub, so you don't have to go navigate a bunch of different websites, but this is typically used for static websites like your HTML and JavaScript projects. If you want to keep your repository private, you'll also have to pay for this feature, and because of that, I don't actually like this option that much. Next, you could use Netlify. All you have to do is connect your GitHub repository, and it will automatically deploy the website for you on a website URL, but the only issue is that every once in a while, you'll run into a bug like this. So this takes us to the actual best option out there, which is Vercel. Start by signing up for an account or log in if you already have one. Once you're in your Vercel dashboard, click on add new at the top right and then select project. As you'll see, since I'm signed in, I could see all of my Git repositories, including this Premier Zone website that we just built. So go ahead and select import. Now you'll be brought to this page to configure any settings like the root directory, any environment variables, and you could also set up which framework preset you want. In this drop down menu, you could choose from any single one of these. Notice how it was automatically able to detect that I built a React app. Finally, just go ahead and click deploy here, and it will go ahead and generate a website for you that's live for anybody to see. And there you go. Once you're done, you'll be brought to this congratulations page, which I think is actually pretty cool. And you could go ahead and add domains if you want. You could get a bunch of different insights, but we're actually now done. If you see, this is the website I built. If I just click this, it's going to bring me to this website URL, which I can then share with anybody online. The best part about Vercel, if you come back to this production dashboard, is if I make any changes to my GitHub repository, it will actually automatically update this website for me, so I never have to worry about it. Now, let's move on to the back end. The back end of a website or application is kind of like the server. It's something you will never see as a user, but it's what determines all of the functionality of your application. 
For example, with the button we talked about in our front end, when you actually click it, the back end logic is what's actually performing the search in our database. Just like with front end development, when you build the back end application and you test this and run this on local hosts like localhost 8080, this is only visible on your computer and not to anybody else's. To start, make sure your code is in a GitHub repository just like what we did with the front end. So let's just create a new repository called Premier League Website Backend, and then we're going to upload all of my Spring Boot backend code here, but replace this with whatever code you want and name you want. Now the issue with backend development is that hosting is not as straightforward as it is with frontend websites. Because of this, there are barely any viable free options out there, but don't worry, let me put you on to some of the three best possibilities. The first is hosting on AWS. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, and it's a cloud platform that offers a variety of different services. It is used by a bunch of different big tech companies, so having this on your resume will help you stand out so much, and it's not even covered in universities for some reason. So AWS is actually not free at all, but that being said, if you create a new account, you could actually get 12 months of credits of free stuff for hosting your coding projects. This includes services like Amazon EC2, which are like virtual servers, and Amazon RDS, which are databases. The issue with this method is after the 12 month period, you will get billed and these bills can rack up like a crazy amount, so be careful. If you decide to take this route, I highly recommend hosting your backend as an EC2 instance with S3 buckets. And if you want a full comprehensive tutorial on this, I highly recommend you check out this article. I'll also link this article in the description of this video. The second option is Heroku. I know it's not technically free anymore like it used to be, but that being said, if you're a student, you could actually get it for free for over two years. Start by heading to Google and search for GitHub Student Developer Pack. All you have to do is prove that you're a student, and this sometimes includes stuff like sending in your student ID, and they'll get back to you within three to five business days, and then you'll get up to $10,000 of free stuff. Once you do that, head over to Heroku and create an account. After you'll be brought to this dashboard in Heroku, just click new at the top right and then select create new app. Give your app a name like Premier League Backend. And notice how this actually is available. You go ahead and choose your region between United States or Europe. So we'll just stick with United States and then just select create app. Now in Heroku, you have a bunch of different methods for deployment. The easiest is far and away connecting to your GitHub repository. So let's just select that button. Now, as you can see, it's already connected to my GitHub. We just have to enter the repository name and it will do everything else for me. After you select the repository, all you have to do is determine if you want to manually deploy from the branch or set up automatic deployments. And this functions exactly like the Vercel, where anytime you make a change to your GitHub repository, it will automatically detect when that happens and change your server. Now, as you can see, it says I'm connected and that's how we know that I'm actually live. So just go ahead and click open app and there is my server. Finally, and this is what I use for most of my coding products on my website, it's render.com and this is because it's completely for free. After creating an account and connecting to your GitHub, you'll be brought to this dashboard. What you wanna do is select new web service and then you just wanna select your GitHub repository. Now you'll be brought to this setup page. Here you could choose your root directory and set up any environment variables, but most crucially, you could select the language you wanna deploy with. So you can see you have Docker, Elixir, Go, Node, Python 3, Ruby, or Rust as all different supported backend languages. If you're like me and you're trying to host the backend in something that's not provided, which is Spring Boot, you could dockerize your application and then choose Docker here. And then all you'll have to do is add a Docker file into your repository. Now that process is slightly more complicated. It will take you an additional five minutes maybe if you just follow this entire tutorial line by line. I'll also leave a link for that in the description below just in case you also want to host something that's not supported. Now the catch with Render is that they have a bunch of these different paid tiers. I'm going to select free since this is ideal for hobby projects. But the problem is that this means your app has a long spin up time. So say somebody hasn't used your app in two or three days, it could take up to two minutes for the first time your server has to restart itself. So as you can see, it's actually explained that free instances spin down after periods of inactivity. 
So you could go ahead and pay to avoid all of this, but we're gonna stick with the free route, especially since we are most likely a student looking for a job. And once you're done, just select deploy web service, and then you'll have everything set up for you. Last but not least, we actually have the database. There is one clear winner here, and it's far and away Supervase. It includes a Postgres SQL database, authentication, real-time subscriptions, and storage. So it's no surprise that not only is this the best free option for hosting, but other tech companies actually use this themselves. After signing up, you just wanna select new project and then select your organization. Enter all of your project details, like your name, we'll just call this Premier Zone. Next, you're gonna go ahead and select a password and then finally choose the region you're in. I'll do Canada and then select create new project. So now Superbase is actually going ahead and generating a new Postgres SQL database for you. And this process might take a few minutes. Once the database is ready, you'll be provided with all the connection details, including the database URL, username, password, and port, all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, you could set up authentication, storage, or click connect to see how you could actually connect this to your project. But we actually wanna start by setting up the database. So navigate to your dashboard here on the left and you could choose between table editor or SQL editor. If you choose SQL editor, you could create and edit tables with SQL or you could create tables through this little menu here in the table editor, which I actually prefer. So just go ahead and select create new table, give it a name and a description, all that if you want. But my favorite feature by far is this import data via spreadsheet. So I don't have to manually do any of the work myself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and import the CSV file. So there's my CSV file with all of the stats of the Premier League that I wanted. And we'll just go ahead and select save and select save at the end. And as you can see, it's creating the new table with 15 columns. Once you're done, you'll actually see visually in this table editor that every single thing we had in our database has been added to Superbase. And that's all you need to set up your database live online. So after you do all that, you'll have everything hosted online for free, but you are not done yet and you have to do these three setup steps. In your front end code, you have to make sure that all of your connection requests are now being made to your back end URL and not localhost 8080 anymore. In your back end, you also need to connect this Superbase database by entering all the details in your properties file. For example, in Spring Boot, it'll be my application.properties file. Finally, you have to set up some sort of course configuration to allow get requests or more if you want, like post requests, put requests, delete requests, all of that, from the front end URL that you hosted. So it's gonna be your website URL. And there you have it. If you've followed along and done everything step by step, you should have your coding project fully set up by now. If you actually want to build this coding project yourself, I highly recommend you check out my 40 minute tutorial in Spring Boot. If you also want more access to free resources, one on one mentorship, resume reviews and so much more, I highly recommend you guys join my community in the link in my bio. And finally, if you learned something or you just enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.